Today I'm gonna to give you two things. I'm gonna teach you how to deadlift and I'm gonna give you a deadlift program, which if you follow, you're gonna gain at least 29% strength in a 12 week program. Let me introduce you to one of the strongest athletes on my team. This is Alex Godly Strong Simon. How much are you weighing at the moment? I'm on a diet, so I'm about 151 kilos. Very light, 151 kilograms. In his second ever powerlifting competition, he became the number one powerlifter in Australia, all time Australian record holder. He deadlifted 400 kilograms using this exact program that we're giving you, and now he's repeating this same program, and he's up to phase two, which is paused deficit deadlifts, one of my favorite deadlift variations to teach you so many great things about deadlifting. And I'm gonna go through it every step of the way so that you can learn too. We're warming up. Alex, as strong as he is, he even likes to start warming up with an empty barbell. So all he's doing is just pumping the blood through his body, warming up his core temperature. It's winter here in Sydney, Australia. When it's a little bit colder outside, you need to spend a little bit more time warming up so you feel good. Alex especially likes to start his sessions with a little bit of sweat and he takes his time a lot actually. And I actually like taking my time as well. That's what I encourage for everybody. A lot of people say, Warming up should be done quickly and all of these things. Actually, all the strongest athletes on my team really spend a lot of time warming up. So keeping it simple right now, empty barbell, and then we're just gonna go plate, plate, plate. So he's doing an RDL first. That doesn't really matter. So that's just not the technique that we're gonna be doing. But then when we put the first plate on, which is gonna be 40 kilogram plates, so 60 kilograms, so one plate on each side, 60 kilograms and two plates, 100 kilos. Then 140, 180, I'm trying to just think about my maths now. 180, 220, now he finished his last program on 220, which was snatch grip deadlift from a deficit. That's the first phase of this program. And he did that for 10 sets of six reps with a slow eccentric tempo. Now I'm gonna explain how I choose the phases of the deadlift. I like to end the last phase on the strongest deadlift variation or the deadlift variation that you're gonna use in competition. So Alex, that's gonna be a conventional deadlift. That's gonna be the easiest variation of the long-term plan, which is 12 weeks. We do each phase for four weeks. So the last four weeks is conventional deadlift. This is the four weeks before that. It's a little bit harder with the longer range of motion because we're standing on the deficit and we're adding a pause. And the phase before that is a snatch grip deadlift from a deficit, which is even longer range of motion than this one. So that's how I like to choose my exercises for all of the different movements. Same with my squat patterns and upper body exercises. I like to go hardest variation when we're further away from competition, then gradually make the variation easier and easier until we come to peak phase and we use the easiest, strongest variation so we're lifting the absolute most. What that also does is it guarantees that from week one to the whole duration of the program, which is 12 weeks, you're gonna be able to add weight to the bar every single time you come into the gym. So we've got four weekly programs. We add weight to the bar by following this last YouTube video that I've posted for you guys, which is how I period as effort. So go and have a look at that if you wanna know how I do my four weekly programs. But then when we go from phase one to phase two with an easier variation, it guarantees you're able to lift a heavier weight. And then in the next phase, phase three, an easier variation again, which guarantees you're gonna add more weight to the bar again. So that's how we're gonna do this. Now, let's have a look at set number one with the first plate. He stands in his comfortable stance, which is unique to everyone. With me, I like to stand with my feet a lot closer, but my hips are a lot smaller than his. So that's his conventional stance. His arms go on the outside of that. And if you have a look, the idea of this lift is to teach you a number of things. One, how to take the slack out of the bar. A lot of the times people love the grip and rip style of deadlifting, which you may have seen all over social media. I don't like that. What I like to do is encourage the lifter to precisely lift the weight off the ground by taking the slack out of the bar and doing a pause off for the first inch or so, however the distance is, like just the first component, that's what we're after, teaches the body how to stay tight under load. Now, this is how I like to think about it. Look at the thickness of the deficit. It's the size of a bumper plate. It doesn't really matter. Sometimes I like to use an even smaller deficit than that. And if you lack mobility, I'll get him to stand on a, a 10 kilogram bumper plate, which is even thinner again. But the objective of this is just to pause it at the height of that plate. So a lot of people pause it a little bit higher. It's pretty hard to gauge exactly, and it's totally fine. But the idea is just to pause it, the height of the deficit, which is gonna be the exact height that he's gonna be deadlifting when he does a conventional deadlift off the floor, which these Olympic sized plates and everything is nine inch height. So that's the objective, which means we are strengthening the body position exactly off the floor. 
Let's have a look again. So what he likes to do, he loves his warm up, as I said. So he's already done one set with this weight. We're gonna do two sets of this weight. So have a look at what he's doing. He starts with the barbell in line with his mid foot. That's perfectly balanced. Have a look at some of the cues that he likes to use. He pulls his armpits towards his pelvis, which allows him to use his strong lats to keep his torso rigid from start to finish. The next thing he's doing, he braces his core before he gently picks it up off the ground. He reaches the crown of his head towards the ceiling. Little cues, so armpits to pelvis for the lats and crown of the head to the ceiling. He, he does that while he braces, so he pushes into the belt, braces and then gently lifts it off the ground. Just ideally the height of the thickness of this plate. Pauses it a second, two seconds, it doesn't matter too much. A lot of people like to do really, really long pauses. I think that makes it so you can't lift as heavy. So it's a little bit of a trade-off. I still want him to be lifting heavy, but what I want him to do is guide the weight off the floor, take all the momentum out of the equation, and then drive it. So as you know, it strengthens the body off the floor, but it's also gonna strengthen the lockout, and I'm gonna explain how in the next set. Because most people, when they do a deadlift, have a look at this off the floor, how tight he is and how rigid his torso is gonna be. That's the perfect position. That's a really perfect position. What happens when people fail their lockout is they're usually pulled out of position off the floor. They'll, you'll see this happening. And then when they get to the lockout, they can't finish the lockout. This emphasizes the start position, strengthens the hell out of the start position. And if you can maintain that when you take the weight off the ground, it makes the lockout way easier. So not only are we strengthening his body, we're teaching his body how to stay tight from start to finish. And that's how it strengthens your strength off the floor and your strength off the lockout. So this is one of my bang for your buck deadlift variations. Next warm up set, our warm up strategy, as you saw with the empty barbell, he was doing like 15 reps. And then he did two sets of 60 kilograms. Uh, now we start adding weight, we do less and less reps. If you have a look at his head, he's sparkling, he's got a little bit of sweat. So he's actually warm. So it's not about warming up now, it's now about teaching his body to accept the heavy weight. So 140 kilograms, we'll do this for two reps. Armpits the pelvis, slightly lifts it off the ground. So you know, I don't really care, like I'm not gonna get him in trouble if he doesn't lift it the exact height of this. It doesn't matter that much. It's just the intention. So his intention is to just break the floor and pause there for whatever it is, a second, and that's perfect technique. I used to do everything without it, but unfortunately, this floor has been banged up over time and uh, it grips, so it's really hard to just slide the plates on. So. Now as we get heavier and heavier, it just makes life so much easier to load the plates. But there's a few other tricks that I can tell you if you don't have one of those. I'll show you on the next set. He's just added straps. Uh, 140 kilograms of weight before was easy enough for his bare hands. I'm sure this is as well, but what I don't want here while we're deadlifting his back is for his grip to interfere with the strength. He's not competing for powerlifting competition, so he doesn't really need to hold on to barbell for any reason. Uh, and when that's the case, I actually like using straps. It's going to allow him to really strengthen his back and his posterior chain without grip being the limiting factor. One cue that I like to give people, see how he's got those shin pads on? I like to say, I wanna hear it sliding up your shins. That makes sure that you are pulling the bar into your body and using your lats from start to finish. Did you hear that noise? You may not have because the camera's a bit far away, but that's what I want to hear. I want to hear the bar going Shh. It tells me that he's sliding that barbell up his shins, and I'll tell you something that happens. A lot of the times, uh, some people at the highest level even recommend you shouldn't let it touch your shins because it's friction and it slows it down, all these things. Uh, with me, actually, as a learning tool, I think it's the best thing that you can do. Keep it in contact with your shins. I want to hear it sliding up your shins. That's going to tell me that your lats are on, but also that you're keeping the bar close to your body. I'll tell you what happens when you don't have shin pads and when you're not sliding it up your body. It actually hurts when you don't have shin pads and it stops people from keeping it close. And what happens then is they stop using their lats. They let the bar drift away from their body. So when you don't use your lats, it's a much weaker position. And when it drifts away from your body, it's weaker again. So. If I could give one really big piece of advice is use the shin pads, which are equivalent to knee sleeves. So normally he does wear knee sleeves, but right now he's got actual shin protectors. Use your lats and keep the bar 
in line with your midfoot from start to finish, that's the most important cue. If he was doing this for a powerlifting competition, I would probably have him do it with his bare hands because he will need to use his grip strength in a powerlifting competition. And there's a few options here. There's three, one I wouldn't even consider it to be an option, and that's double overhand grip. Uh, that's the weakest by far. The reason it's weak is because the bar can roll out of your hands, no matter how strong your grip strength is. That is super weak, not advised. The next grip that most people use is called a mixed grip. Uh, and that's what I use in competition. That's also what Alex uses in competition. Um, the reason why it works is because you've got one hand over and one hand under, and one hand's rolling at one direction and the other one's rolling the other, so it doesn't roll at all. Uh, and that's a very effective grip. The negative to that is you can see people tearing their biceps with the underhand grip. So when you put out your hand, which is the underhand grip, it increases the tension because the bicep attaches to the radius. And when you supinate, it increases the tension here. And if they bend their elbow just a little bit, their bicep thinks that it's supposed to be working to lift that heavy weight. And it's, my bicep's not heavy enough to lift 180 kilograms, uh, and most people's aren't. But either way, it's not 180 kilos that's gonna affect his biceps, it's more like 300 kilograms and plus can very easily tear your biceps if you do it wrong. So that's why you've gotta really learn to relax your arms if you're gonna be doing that mixed grip. Uh, the third grip, which I consider to be the strongest grip, but the hardest one to learn, and that is a hook grip. So if you have a look at the best powerlifters in the world and all these new world records, they're all being done with a, with a hook grip. And what that is, is where you grab the bar in the normal position and you grab your thumb. So the best way to grab your thumb is kind of like two fingers. Dig your hands into the bar here and grab your nail with, with your root finger and then your forefinger on top. And then these, these two fingers are kind of just hanging tight. And, and that creates kind of like a hook and it hurts your thumb a lot which takes a lot of time to condition your thumb so that it stops hurting. But either way, that's the strongest grip. I used to think that it was advantageous to use these fingers to hold on because you can grip, you know, like, I don't know, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100 kilos with these fingers. And so, so use them. But then I saw uh, the man with the biggest deadlift bare hands in the world, Dan Grigsby. He's got a 482.5 kilogram deadlift with a hook grip. And I saw his tutorial where he said, just two fingers and these, these, uh, these two fingers are really doing nothing. I thought, huh, if I was gonna take any person's advice, it'd be his, so there's your hook grip. Two fingers, the other two are just relaxing, coming along for the ride. One rep, 220 kilograms. Same setup every single time. It's the same process. He treats all of the warm-up weights like it's the top weight. Everything's perfectly symmetrical. His stance, you could cut him in half and it'd look, the left would look exactly like the right. And same with his grip. So that's the things that you can control. So I recommend you do control it. Big breath, armpits the pelvis, crown of the head to the ceiling. Pause, drive. Easy peasy. Really nice. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, uh, one bit of feedback that I'm gonna give Alex. Actually, he's moving very well. He's a great deadlifter, of course he moves well. Um, however, one bit of feedback that I'm gonna give him is when he drops the weight, because you're standing on a deficit, you think you're fixed in position, but if you drop the weight um, like a free fall from the top, which is what a lot of the time good deadlifters do that, we kind of control the eccentric, but not very, actually we don't even control the eccentric, it's a controlled drop, and sometimes it can bounce out of alignment. And if it does bounce out of alignment, my advice to you was to realign yourself and adjust your feet so you're not uh, crooked in any way, because that can be pretty dangerous. Actually, I tore my hamstring that way many years ago. I kind of picked it up and it bounced a little bit when I dropped it. Picked it up again, bounced a little bit more, and it was, you know, every time I bounced it, it moved about a centimetre, so not much. But then by the second rep, uh, you know, two centimetres, and it was about this much weight, it was about 200, 60 kilograms, uneven, picked up the weight, tore my hamstring. So now I take a lot of care with that. If you pick up the weight and you drop it and it bounces a little bit to the side, don't just pick it up from here. Adjust your feet and take your time in between each rep. So now we're at 260 kilograms. This is his top set. We're gonna do four sets, four reps, paused deficit deadlift. One rep. Ha <laughs> ha 
<laughs> Let's go, bro. Big focus. One clean rep. Let's go. Let's go. Tight. Yes. Okay. Set. So each of these phases are four weeks long and the next phase, as I mentioned, is the strongest pattern of the entire long-term phase, which is conventional deadlift from the floor. So no more deficit, no more pauses, just straight up rip that heavy weight off the floor. Now here's the thing, we don't just rip it like I said, even though I just said rip it. We're teaching him all of these tools such as taking the slack out, so I want perfection off the ground, I want finesse, I want tension. The snatch grip deadlift from a deficit teaches you how to really master leg drive. So we're learning all these valuable lessons which, with each of the phases. Uh, and then we're gonna use the same things that we've learned to really perfect the technique. So we come into the last phase and yeah, we've built muscle, we've built strength, but we've refined the hell out of our movement. And that's how you're gonna get your 29% at least in strength gains over the 12 weeks. Technique, brother, technique! Slowly off the ground, slowly! Let's get time, massive brace, massive brace! Pump is hard, pull it into your shins, pull it into your shins! Yes, perfect, 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 fuck yeah! Into your shins! Yeah! Beautiful! Perfect! Into your shins! Nice work! Yes, one more! Let's go, bro! Last one! Into your shins! Easy! Yeah! Yeah, brother! Perfect! Fuck it! That was, that was quite beautiful! Love it, man! We are very, very, very happy with how that moved. Uh, you know, here's the thing, whenever we record our videos, I can feel how hard he's working, but then when we go back and have a look at the videos, I know that's gonna look smooth for you guys. It's hard to get in position, it's hard to stay tight, but then you're rewarded instantly, and if you have a look at the video, you guys will see before even we do, we're gonna go and have a look at the video, and we're gonna do three more sets of that, and... 10 minute break. 10 minute break actually, so his warm ups, just so you know, a lot of people ask those questions. How long is the rest between warm ups? Very minimal, and then as you get heavier and heavier, we take bigger and bigger breaks. So his last warm up was one rep on this weight, uh, and then we waited about five minutes, but now it's the top set, so 260 for four. Uh, big guy, lots of muscle. The more muscle you have and the heavier the weights you lift, the more recovery you need. So uh, 10 minutes, a lot of people think that's too long. Well, the strongest guys in the world, We'll disagree. So, 10 minutes and we're going to come back to number two. exercise time. The conventional deadlift, one of my favorite exercises. However, it's very general when it comes to building muscle. Of course, it does build a whole lot of muscle, but over his whole body. So now what I like to do is include other variations. Uh, this is a 90 degree hip extension. Uh, something that I like about it is that it isolates the glutes a little bit better. It strengthens them in the fully shortened position. So a deadlift, it's emphasizes like the, the hardest part is off the ground and that's when the glutes are in the stretch position, which is excellent. 
But then when we get to the top of a conventional deadlift, there's, there's very little load when the glutes are in the shorter position. Now this emphasizes, so it's not much load here, and as we get higher and higher, that's where the movement becomes the most challenging, where the glutes are in the most shortened position. So those two exercises really complement each other. Four by four, conventional deadlift, pause from a deficit. Three sets of 15, I like a high rep range for this. The back loves high reps, but I don't like doing high reps on a complex movement like a deadlift. So this is where we save all of our high rep work on the accessories. So three sets of 15 on a back extension. He's got a lot of body weight here. Look how heavy his body is. Plus he's holding 25 kilograms. You see a lot of skinny people like me. Uh, I can do a whole bunch of weight, but my upper body is, I'm 100 kilos. He's 150 kilos. Look how big the guy is. So. Uh, for a lot of the big guys out there, it's pretty hard just doing your own body weight. So after that deadlift, you don't have to go that much weight, get a lot of blood flow in, high reps, hits the spot. Last exercise of the day, hamstring curls. You got seated hamstring curls and lying hamstring curls. Seated is better because it puts the hamstrings at it more of a stretch, but we only have a lying hamstring curl, so that's all we're gonna use. Doesn't mean it's bad because it's not as good as seated, but just telling you the facts. If you've got access to a seated, do that. Something that I like about a hamstring curl, so challenges the hamstrings through knee joint flexion, which is their second function. We've only been doing hip extension. Now, if you understand the hamstrings, there's four heads of the hamstrings. On the inside of the leg, semi-membranosus and semi-tendinosus. On the outside of the leg is the biceps femoris. So that's one muscle, but bicep, bi means two. There's two heads, the long head and the short head, and the short head doesn't cross the hip joint. So when you do hip extension actions, you're not touching the short head at all. So if all you do for hamstrings development is RDLs, deadlifts, back extensions, you're not touching the short head of your biceps femoris. And I don't like to have any of his muscles neglected at all. So if you want complete development, that's a really nice trio of exercises. And that's all we've done today. Four by four, deficit pause deadlifts, three by 15, 90 degree hip extension, and three sets of 10 reps on a hamstring curl. Session is done. What a session. Just thought it'd be valuable to get a little bit of feedback from the lifter. Uh, how you feel after that? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Download your free deadlift program. Where is it? Okay, in the description. Get your free deadlift program in the description of this video. I feel. <laughs>